When you live in South Florida like we do, the only way to get out is obviously north, hence our options are kind of limited. A good part of the trip involves a tedious, boring, mostly flat highway, no matter which option you take. I-75 is not the worst, but it goes along the west coast, so it's no good for us this time. State Route 27 and US-1 are a little more interesting because they go through cities and small towns, but it takes forever. The Florida Turnpike, <laughs> it's a horribly boring drive I refuse to take ever again and to add insult to injury, they actually even charge you for it. My route of choice north is uh, usually Interstate 95. Pretty boring as well, but at least it's stall free and the quickest way. We finally make it to Daytona Beach at around 9.30 p.m. We find a hotel to spend the night using the Hotels.com iPhone app. It is called uh, La Playa, and it was uh, pretty cheap, 60 bucks for the night. Good morning from Daytona Beach, Florida. We wake up at the crack of dawn to this breathtaking sunrise. Good morning. It is 7.20 in the morning and we have uh, waken up in this uh, near freezing temperatures to photograph the sunrise. Today we continue due north on the east coast of the United States. We're going to visit uh, St. Augustine, uh, America's oldest uh, city, um, what else? Uh, Jacksonville, and eventually we'll arrive at Savannah, Georgia. Meanwhile, enjoy the sunrise. Sorry if I seemed a little slow back there. I was uh, still half asleep and nearly frozen, but... It is time to say goodbye to La Playa. As we continue due north, it wasn't the greatest hotel, but for one night, a comfy bed and the beautiful and frigid oceanfront sunrise we just witnessed, it was more than adequate. We continue driving north here on A1A and uh, our destination, next destination is the Fort Matanza. As you can see, I've been uh, demoted to co-pilot. But that's okay, I'm taking a break. Moving along, the A1A runs almost parallel to the Atlantic coast, and we are going to be driving on this road for a while. It is a refreshing break from boring I-95. We pass by Flagler Beach near Palm Coast. This coastal area in Northeast Florida is called the First Coast for two main reasons. It is the first coast you see as you enter Florida through Jacksonville. More importantly, this was the first part of Florida colonized by Europeans, namely the Spaniards, as we are about to find out by visiting Fort Matanzas. Fort Matanzas is a national monument, and the National Park Service gives us a free ride on a boat to the fort, which guarded the southern mouth of the Matanzas River which accessed St. Augustine. The fort eventually became a ruin as the Spaniards lost Florida, and it was restored in the early 20th century. One major flaw of the restoration, the watchtower was originally a little narrower, and some other historical discrepancies. Two of the cannons are actually the original ones from the fort, the rest are just replicas. When they Body of water. Today you can see that nature took care of it. Eventually that old area, unless the Army Corps of Engineers come over and dredge, dredge it out again, is going to completely get covered by sand. Made with coquina, which is a stone made of crushed shells, and it's actually a fortification that used mortar from lime. Inside, we can see how life would have been for the poor Spanish soldiers stationed here, how they cooked, how they slept. Whoa! How they prayed. We can't this. There's too many people up there. Okay. Come down here. 
The latter gives the only access to the observation deck. Here we can get a commanding view of the Matanzas Inlet. One can only imagine the poor Spanish soldiers seeing the British ships offshore. Our quick excursion to the fort is over, and I must say kudos to the National Park Service as this whole experience was informative, pleasant in spite of the unusually cold weather, and totally free. There is also a nature trail, but it's not so great, not worth it really. Time to go! But before we do that, it is time to fulfill a childish whim of mine, if you will. I've always wanted to drive on the sand on, on the beach, actually. Well, we'll drive recommended. And over here, they let you do it. Well, also back in Daytona, if you noticed uh, the speed limit signs at sunrise earlier today. But uh, here we go. We drive a few miles north to historic St. Augustine. St. Augustine is the oldest continuously occupied European settlement in the United States, founded in 1565 by Spanish explorer Pedro Menéndez de Avilés. However, Juan Ponce de Leon was around here before, in 1513, and he claimed the region for the Spanish crown. After a short drive, we arrive. The pretty building in the background is uh, the famous Flagler College. In 500 feet. At the roundabout. What? <laughs> yeah, the GPS sucks sometimes. At the roundabout. What? <laughs> <laughs> What's up with Waze? <laughs> That's it. We're using Google Maps for the rest of the trip. We pass by the San Marcos Castle, built in 1668 after a British attack and still stands today as the nation's oldest fort, now run by the National Park Service as the Castillo de San Marcos National Monument. The GPS directs us to the closest parking lot. St. Augustine is famous for having the oldest uh, drugstore in the US. I often question the authenticity of these places. Apparently they sold uh, liquor, tobacco, medicine and Indian remedies. We continue exploring this uh, touristy town. We are walking along St. George's Street here in St. Augustine. This is the main drag, St. George's Street. The tourist trap, if you will. Here's supposedly the United States' oldest wooden school from 1716. Although there is an older claim in Staten Island, New York, from 1696. So I have a good conspiracy theory that all this is fake. Who knows? The cobblestone streets, the Cuban flag. I was born in Cuba, so whenever we see the flag, we usually take a picture. The beautiful intercoastal view is a must-do photo opportunity. Well, we'll visit the Ponce de Leon Fountain of Youth some other time because we are kind of pressed for time now, so we must go on. It's 1 p.m., time to leave. Earth we go. We decide to take a scenic coastal A1A instead of faster I-95 once again. We drive for 45 minutes through Pontevedra Beach, which is a mostly oceanfront residential neighborhoods with multi-million dollar homes and golf courses. Very lavish. And we are approaching Jacksonville, Florida, the most populous city in the state, if you only count the people living within the city limits and not the suburbs. Also, quite musical, as uh, popular bands such as uh, Leonard Skinner and Limp Biscuit both originated here. 
also Hip Hop Hacks, 95 South, 69 Boys and the Quad City DJs, uh, very popular in the 90s. They all came from here. We are now arriving at Jacksonville. And we are super hungry, so we are not going to waste any time with any nonsense. We are going straight to this place called the Jacksonville Landing. They are having some kind of Christmas show. So we decided to break one of uh, Traveler's uh, rules and uh, had lunch at the tourist trap, namely at Hooters. Sometimes you need something familiar. And the show goes on. I would imagine that a place like this would be more full of people on a Saturday afternoon, but I guess not. Maybe everybody was indoors due to the chilly weather. The Jacksonville Landing was designed and built by the same company that built Miami's Bayside and some other similar places, and one can sort of see the resemblance. Crossing the bridge, we visit the Friendship Fountain on the other side of the river. The water jets uh, move to the rhythm of the music, the larger style, but in this case, uh, more bouncy music would definitely enhance the effect, I think. City of Jacksonville, St. John's River Park and Marina. Well, time to continue. Not before driving through the historic Riverside neighborhood. One cool thing about this trip going north is the change in vegetation. As you can see, there are no more palm trees. As we continue north, the trees will have less and less leaves. And after a few miles, we are in Georgia. Or should I say, Georgia is on our mind. We are quickly approaching the city of Savannah, Georgia. We're about an hour away. And, uh, We finally arrive at Savannah. We, or should I say Waze, the GPS, gets a little lost finding the hotel, but we do get there eventually. We have gotten a great deal using the Hotel Tonight app on the iPhone, it must if you're traveling like us uh, with no reservations. We landed at the Hyatt in the historic district right on River Street for less than 100 bucks a night. Coming up on our next video, we explore Savannah and continue on our journey north towards New York City. Send me a tweet at Road Nomad with any suggestions about future destinations or whatever is in your mind. I might read some of your comments in a future episode. Also check out uh, our previous trips from Las Vegas to the Grand Canyon and from Los Angeles to San Francisco on the Pacific Coast Highway. I am Robert Morales, your host, wishing you pleasant travels and as always, thank you for watching and see you on the road. Bye now.